But first, let it be as Paul McCartney prepares for his Carrier Dome show. We'll introduce you to one of his biggest fans. I'm Christy Casciato. I'm Rod Wood. The 11 nonstop minutes start now. From WSYR TV Syracuse. Now, 11 nonstop minutes of news. To live and let die. It's been a hard day's wait, but after more than a decade in the making, Sir Paul McCartney himself is coming to Syracuse's Carrier Dome. Good evening, everyone. Mark your calendars for September the 23rd, and you can bet that plenty of folks will be itching for tickets there. Paul McCartney was scheduled to perform here back in the early 90s, but the show ended up falling through. Since then, a lot of factors have kept the music legend from performing here. The hectic schedule of sporting events, making sure students are in town, and, of course, McCartney's touring schedule that takes him all over the world. He is personally involved in looking at all of his routing, so there's no question that when it came to looking at this, he asked a lot of questions, he wanted to know a lot about it, and after he was done hearing everything, it sounded exciting to him. Tickets go on sale next week, and they start just $29.50, but will run all the way up to $350. With an act like McCartney, they say they'll go fast. One big fan hoping to snag a good seat and meet his idol as an SU instructor, who not only teaches a Beatles class, he plays Paul McCartney in a one-man traveling show. News Channel 9's Tammy Palmer tonight shows us how this Syracuse man turned his passion for the Beatles into a career. You can sing a bit. I hope that I can sing a bit. Bob Halligan Jr. has an obsession. The Paul McCartney Hofner Beatle bass is the thing that screams rock and roll. More From his instruments to his wigs. 1964-65-ish. Um, Got it. Is this, and then this is more kind of Sergeant Pepper length. Mm -hmm. Even um, his job feeds the fandom. I am the Syracuse University Beatles class professor. Bob calls himself a perpetual teenager when it comes to the Beatles, in particular, Paul McCartney. Of course, you have to be cute. And, uh, you know, it's, you, you're playful and you, you know, and you have to, woo, you have to hit all the notes. His impression is a tribute to the artist who inspired him to become a musician. I started to write songs when I was 15, which was four years after seeing the Beatles February 9th, 1964 on the Ed Sullivan Show, which a lot of us saw, okay? Uh, but it lit a fire that will never go out. And Halligan found a way to get paid for that obsession, first touring with Beatlemania, you were only waiting. then developing his own one-man show. It's, it's good if the eyes go up like this a bit, the sort of surprise look, and you need to thumb them a bit. Yeah, a couple of thumbs here and there really helps. But he also credits McCartney's influence with his own success as a writer, working with the likes of Cher, Kiss, and Judas Priest. Which was a big hit. It was the hit track from that record. Close your eyes. He learned from studying the master of melodies. And now there's one dream left, to finally meet his idol when he is oh so close at the Dome. I've put out an APB at the highest possible levels, uh, seeking an audience, and so we'll see. I'm, I, that's all I'm going to say. I'm working it hard, girl. <laughs> he is working it. Don't you wish that you had a Beatles class in college? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> and what do they learn all semester? I think I could have studied the Beatles instead of biology. Uh, you know, he has 70 students, and they meet every Monday and talk about the influence of the Beatles on business, music, and, and culture. So plenty of material to study there. Oh, and he's so fun. When yes. can we catch this one-man show? <laughs> the timing couldn't be better with this announcement because he has that show coming up at the Palace Theater in Eastwood on May 5th at 8 o'clock. It's called Paul the Beatle. Oh Tickets are $30 for fans by a fan. Oh, he's something. Yeah. What a, he'd be fun to see. Sure. And uh, let's hope his dream comes true. I hope so. <laughs> Fingers okay. crossed. So thanks, Tim. Uh -huh. And uh, Christy and Tammy, Paul McCartney is not the first Beatle to perform here. After his concert this fall, 
All of them but George Harrison will have taken the stage here in Central New York. Ron Ray is a Syracuse music historian who says McCartney's performance will be the city's crowning jewel. And while this won't be his first time seeing the music icon, he says this is an opportunity he just can't pass up. Well, I saw him last year thinking this may be the last time we get to see Paul, you know. He's a great entertainer, um, great shows, but you never know when the end is the end, uh, you know, for him as a talent. And for complete details on Sir Paul's upcoming at the Carrier Dome, we've got everything posted for you at our place on the web, localsyr.com.